Obviously, she represents Arizona. Congresswoman Kirsten Sinema joins us. Tamak and Gatos, how are you today? I'm doing great, you guys. How are you? Good. You buy zero. Nobody died. You buying that? It's baloney. Yeah. I mean, how, 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 when you first heard this, what was your reaction? Because we screamed something in the studio when the mics were off. I tried that to we say, can't say on the air. I should have said baloney. I think the Congresswoman yeah, right, has a very right. good word to say on right. the air. Well, it's a kid-friendly show, guys, but I want to keep it that way. But I'll tell you this. I think it's baloney. The IG's report found 28 instances of clinically significant delays in care associated with access to care of patients scheduling. Six of those people have died. And the IG identified 17 care deficiencies unrelated to scheduling. 14 of those people have died. So we know that 20 people have died. And while the IG is saying that they can't conclude exclusively say that it was due to this neglect of the VA, I think common sense dictates that there's a case here. And as you guys both know, I've called for an investigation by the Department of Justice for criminal charges related to these deaths, and I'm continuing to make that call in light of today's report. Let me play devil's advocate just for a second. So 50, we, we thought that four, sorry, not 50, 40 people had died. They were ignored. There there was some secret list. They were kind of, waiting care, yeah. yeah. Couldn't that actually be true? Because what the VA is saying is, well, this person had cancer. Well, this person had this. Well, this person uh, had this. It wasn't necessarily, you can make an argument, it wasn't necessarily the fact that we ignored them or told them to go away that they died. It was their illness that eventually killed them. You could make that argument, but I think that's a bad argument. Um, I, mean, I just don't think it's, it's not rational and it's not logical and it doesn't solve the problem for the families of those veterans who lost their loved ones. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story about a veteran in my district who died last June. His okay. name is Daniel Somers. He served two tours in Iraq. He was in classified service. He came home from the war to his sweet wife, Angel, lived in our district, District 9, went to the VA to get help. They gave him um, a diagnosis of traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder, and Gulf War syndrome. And they put him in group therapy. The problem is Daniel couldn't participate in group therapy because he was an interrogator in the war. He was in classified service. He wasn't allowed to share his experiences with other individuals. One day, Daniel drove to the Phoenix VA hospital and asked to be checked in because he was at risk of suicide. They said to him, we don't have any beds to check you in. They also didn't refer him to another hospital or mental health facility to get immediate help. You know what they told him? What? They said, lay down on the floor in the corner, and when you feel better, you can drive yourself home. Yee, jeez. Oh, my God. Now, See, it's stories like that. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but it just may... I, I don't know how you do your job because it just seems like you bang your head against that big, you know, monolith wall called Congress or the VA or whatever. I don't know how you look people in the eye and not want to scream after hearing stuff like that. When you say uh, Congressman, uh, Congresswoman Kirsten Sinema is on with us, if you say you're going to ask for a, another investigation, you know the answer you're going to get. That's the problem we have. If we already get this BS report that says we cannot conclusively make an assertion that these people died because of lack of care. How does your head not explode? So you just keep going. Um, what we've learned in the short time that I've been in Congress is when you run up against a wall and you feel like banging your head up against it, the better decision is to get yourself a sledgehammer and just try not to, to fall down. But and how many times are you going to be able to ask? I mean, if you, you can ask well, for anything. Doing. They can come I'll up with, yeah, they'll, they'll get it. but they, they're going to come up with another way to say conclusive. We can't conclusively come up with a, with a, with a, you know, ipso facto rationale or reason of, of why these they guys come died. Up with zero every single right. time. Right, right. Well, I'll tell you this. If the IG is unwilling to make that conclusive report, we've gone to the DOJ and asked them to investigate around criminal charges. And we'll continue to advocate for the families of these veterans until justice is served. But no, no, but no offense. You can't take no for an answer. You, you're right, but no offense. They're all in the same place. They've got to protect themselves. The DOJ is not going to tell the IG or the Veterans Administration, hey, this isn't right because they're afraid of the backlash and the lawsuits. Mm. You know, 
here's the thing. You got to, we got to, people need to stop being afraid and just do the right thing. Uh, the biggest problem I see with the Veterans Affairs Administration nationally is that they have been putting a number of items first in their priority list, but none of those have been veterans first. And that's the big problem, is that even with this report of their recommendations that they've created, I don't know if you guys have had a look through these 24 recommendations, mm-hmm. these recommendations are still internal, and they maintain the closed culture that exists the VA. And what I see from these recommendations, the VA is not learning. that needs to be more open, transparent, willing to share the responsibility with the community, asking for help. It's still very internal. So how do you fix it? Because, and does this tell you when they come out with the number zero, no one died while waiting for care, you, you think it's just another cover-up? Well, I think it's a failure for the IG's office to reach a rational conclusion. But they're saying we can't conclusively link these deaths. Okay. Oh, jeez. Well, you know what? So some other folks try. Y- we we can figure this out. Two it's weeks ago. Time. Two weeks ago, and you should. You sh- you're in Washington, right? Right now. No, no, no. I'm in Phoenix. You're in today. Phoenix right now. Okay. James Brady, the press secretary of Ronald Reagan, died two weeks ago. And they put on his death certificate. It was a homicide from ni- from being shot in 1981. Now you're, this just floors me. They'll they'll do that for James Brady, but they will not say that 40 veterans died while trying to get care because you really can't connect those dots. They're just idiots. I swear. So so you guys, okay. What I appreciate is you guys get what I'm trying to say here. Absolutely. We have got to just keep fighting on this. We have to. But there's an additional level of frustration. I don't, you know, I'm looking through this list of the 24 recommendations, and recommendation number 13 is about whether there should be administrative action against management of the Phoenix VA. As you guys know, there are four administrative staff, including the former director, who have been on administrative leave for all these months, which means they've been getting a full paycheck while sitting at home, you know, watching TV and eating bonbons, mm-hmm. right? So I asked Secretary Shinseki to fire them. He said to me before he resigned, I called for his resignation, and then I followed him and said, you need to fire these people. He said, I'm going to start the process, but it's hard. And I said, great. We're going to pass legislation in Congress to make it easier because we should be able to fire people for doing a bad job. So Congress passed the law. The president signed it. And we asked Secretary McDonald, the new secretary, to fire these people. Well, today they put out this report saying we want to charge an internal group to convene an administrative board to conduct a review of right. these managers' culpability. And then maybe we'll do something. Right. Okay, in other words, it's always going to be stalled. Yeah, or you know what? You could fire people today. That of course. That would be the right action. Well, yeah, but they don't want to take the right action. They want to cover it right. up. Uh, Representative Kirsten Cinema has been uh, joining us. Congresswoman, thank you very much for uh, being on the show. Well, thank you, guys. And count on me to keep fighting this fight. Let me know when you guys have some ideas about the actions that should be taken. I'm here to fight for you.